How can you get crystal clear sound in the middle of a muddy field? My name's Chris Taplin, I'm the sound manager at Green Man Festival and we're on the festival site which is the Glanisk Estate in Mid Wales, in the Brecon Beacons. First job is booking sound systems that are appropriate, trying to provide good quality sound for the audiences and also provide what the bands need. And I also deal with noise control on the site and off the site. So that's looking at um, health and safety for people who are working, but also for the audience, obviously, and looking at the impact, the noise footprint of this festival on the surrounding area. And we're quite lucky here because it's, as you can see, it's a very unpopulated area. There are houses in the distance that there is an impact on. I try and measure that and keep it within reasonable limits and uh, liaise with the council. And I also have another guy who works with me whose job is primarily taking measurements and doing, the, doing a noise report at the end of the festival to see what's happened. It's, it's been very good here. We don't touch wood. We've never actually had any complaints by anybody. That's very unusual for a festival site. So what we're going to do on this stage is we, we fly the PA in the air on chain motors to give it some height so we can kind of fire down at people. We've got a nice shape here. The place is a bowl. So you get people sitting on the, um, on the banks up here, so I need to have sound hitting high enough up. And we've got a very specific line array system which is designed, you can move the angles so you can point at a place and say, yeah, we're hitting that, it's going to sound good there. So this is the main stage structure. Obviously that's the performance area. And these two towers at the side are where the PA is going to hang. You can see the I-beam at the top there, which is the actual weight-bearing member. So we'll hang a chain motor from there and drag the PA up, and that gives us the ability to throw sound further away from the uh, stage rather than having it all just focusing down here. So there'll be racks of amp racks across here, speakers up there, and then we're going to divide this stage about halfway across, and this back area will be used for a changeover space, so the next band that's coming on will set up in this area while that band's performing, and then we'll swap them around. Hiring sound equipment is very expensive. A system there, there'll be 10 boxes of JBL Vertec aside. The, the speakers have a degree of sound radiation, which is their kind of hot spot, which is 90 degrees. That's not quite going to cover the area right in the centre there, so we'll put some little infills in there just to give people in the centre a bit more top end, So they, because obviously they're going to be the biggest fans right at the front, you want to make sure they can hear it okay. The big thing for us is on Wednesday when the PA companies arrive with all their systems and put them in place and uh, then they'll run up the systems and we'll do system checks. We'll walk around, we'll take frequency readings and you know, they'll use their ears and they'll tune the PAs to the best possible sound they can get. Then on Thursday I'll have all the backline instruments coming in, so we'll distribute those to the steel stores behind the stages in the right place. All the health and safety warning signs, you know, you need to wear hearing, hearing protection in these different places. And then we start to get artists on site, so then it's into the thick of just you know, dealing with their bits and pieces. Chris books a PA company who mix sound for the show. I'm Tony Zabo and I am the sound systems engineer for Adlib Audio. What we have here is monitor position and these are the three guys and girls that will be looking after the stage. Kenny's going to be looking after the console, the mixing console here, and he will provide the sound for all the artists on stage. There's uh, speakers all over the stage and every artist gets their own dedicated mix. Laura and Michael will be looking after the logistics of making sure that when the changeover happens from a solo artist to a full band that there's the right things on stage, the right number of microphones and wedges. Wedges are our little speakers. So we have a short changeover, we do a mad panic and then we check it with the front of house. Uh, front of house provides the sound for the audience so once it's okay there then uh, we go and we do a shot. What is Tony's background? I was at university studying physics, strangely enough, applied physics. A few friends formed a band and I just started doing sound for them. You know, it was, a, it was probably the equivalent of this little speaker here, one per side, and a little tiny mixing console and I probably earned five dollars a show. You know, <laughs> I was at university, that was enough. <laughs> There's a lot of physics in sound. From the acoustics, which are waves, we have radio mics, RF waves. Um, there's a lot, and a lot of people, both with RF and acoustics, think it's black magic. They think that it's just, you've got to learn a few things and that's what happens. But when I, mean, I can see speakers, and you know, this is a subwoofer and this is a high mid cabinet, and if they're in a certain shape, I can look at it and I can pretty well get an idea of the coverage pattern and the lobing and all that. How does Tony decide how many speakers he'll need? Basically, I can get on the front of stage and I can get the measurements of the room and I've got 3D modelling software and I'll do a model of the room 
and then I will put the speakers in that model and then I will adjust the speaker system, the angles and the height and the, and the direction and so on. I will adjust that to try and get the most even coverage for all of the audience area. So, I mean, for instance, the people in front of the stage are within five to 10 meters of the stage. The people at the top of the hill are just over the 100 meter mark. It's a massive difference. We know that the majority of the yeah. audience yeah. is going yeah. to hear it well because they're the people right in front. And the thing is that sometimes people don't want to be in that 100 dB or 96 dB. They want to be able to talk and still hear. So if you go over there, you can still hear, but it might be 3, 6 dB down. So you don't necessarily want to try and fix that. And if an organi event organiser comes along and says, oh no, it's not loud enough over there, it's like, okay, well, I guess they did want it loud. I'll turn that up then.